Madame la Chancelière, Mr. President, distinguished guests, families, friends, colleagues, and graduates, I am immensely grateful for this recognition. And it's also a huge honor to share the stage with Dr. David Miles. And once upon a time, when I was a dean, I hooded our president the day he became Robert McKinnon, B.A. Honors. <laughs> now this is so cool, it really is. Members of the class of 24, this is your trip. Thank you for taking me along for the ride. I'm going to share some thoughts about cocoons and conversations. In May 2019, Tantamau visited schools with a play about social anxiety. Characters retreated into a cocoon that was growing at center stage. A spectator began the post-show talkback with this comment in front of 300 peers. He said, I like the play. It's dystopian. <laughs> he was in grade six. Fast forward 10 months to Friday, the 13th of March, 2020. Lockdown. Talk about cocoons and the bewildering new terms. The course will be hybrid. I'm a false positive. Nova Scotia is closed. <laughs> and the advice, avoid super spreaders, be a cluster buster, not a long hauler. Some advice was downright strange. You should try bleach. <laughs> they say bleach would work. Try bleach. And the and then you masked, you test it, you retest it, you flattened the curve, hoped for herd immunity, and prevailed. Despite the distractions, you gave so much to Mount A, and I'm not talking about tuition. The dystopia did not diminish while the virus had our attention. New wars, proxy wars, forgotten wars, millions on the move against their will, our earth in agony, climate and cultural reckoning, sociopaths fantasizing about tyranny, Strange times, but here we are. Really? We're here in body, but if you're like me, your mind is still trying to catch up. We could call it life lag. You prevailed because of who you are and because you have a life team. People who've had your back some are here today. Many are people you will never meet. Our life team helps us deal with life lag, but they can't do it all. We need cocoons, and we need conversation. One of my cycling companions, named Bruce Springsteen, 
has this lament. He, he sings, I just want someone to talk to and a little bit of that human touch. I didn't sing those words because I was diagnosed as a red bird in grade two. <laughs> Speaking of school, at my 50-year high school reunion, I confessed to having been a nerd. A, friendly, a friend quickly saved that conversation. You weren't a nerd, you were intense. <laughs> intense? Webster's Dictionary gives us many synonyms. I like passionate. And I hope she meant passionate about sharing ideas. Huh, I'm monologuing about conversation. I'm sorry about the irony, but I'll push on. Let's think of conversation as a team sport. Here are some rules. One, we watch nuances better face to face. Also, the coffee tastes better. Two, coercion sometimes wears a disguise. We have to have a conversation about that. Three, the best ideas often emerge from silence. Four, and finally, conversation might not come easily. Social anxiety is real. My first day at Mount A in September 1958 brought social anxiety in spades. That first day here, ended in terror. I discovered too late that my first year residence room had no door. <laughs> Just a doorway, some cocoon. All night long, sophomores wandered the hallways, probably seeking frosh to abduct. Sleepless, in Sackville. <laughs> Morning finally came. I came out of the cupboard. <laughs> and the open door became a metaphor for teaching as intense, passionate, inclusive conversation. Fast forward to convocation, May 15th, 1961. Oh, the 61 on my Mount A jacket is not a team number. <laughs> I was here, but not quite. In Fawcett Hall, a large white building with Grecian pillars, sort of here, but facing York Street. S change induces life lag. I recall the creaky wooden balcony that fortunately never fell on the orchestra, and the speaker, Luigi Robichaud, newly elected premier of New Brunswick, who shared an idea. Equal opportunity. Chance égale pour toutes et tous. His idea was enacted, and it made a difference. It's still a work in progress. Good ideas can take a long time to become reality. May 16th that year, back on the farm in Pixel County. I had changed, but my folks had not. They went to bed too early. <laughs> I missed the intensity of Mount A, the late night conversations. I was grieving and I was thinking, what next? The angst ended in August, thanks to a teacher. When that member of my life team had said he planned to nominate me for a scholarship in France, I said, thank you. I'd love to go anywhere but Paris. His answer, the Sorbonne is in Paris. 
you will go there or I won't nominate you. I went to Paris. <laughs> Now I wonder whether I thanked him enough. I arrived in Paris 36 hours after more than 200 peaceful demonstrators, mostly Algerians, drowned in the Seine, pushed by police for violating a curfew. I knew nothing about the 61 massacre, and neither did most of France, because the news blackout lasted for many years. My tiny cocoon in Montparnasse was not entirely safe. Books tumbled from shelves above my head when the metro began to rumble underneath the building early in the morning. Now imagine being hit on the head by a volume or two of Proust. <laughs> Paris offered theaters at student prices, frequent protests, and cafes with vin chaud to and warm conversations. The final months of the Algerian war brought reckoning and bombs. I learned a lot about colonialism and came to appreciate art that questions hierarchies and hegemonies. Now that I'm Dr. Alec, I can safely make this confession. I quit school in grade three, a one-room school. The reason? Bullying. Carol coaxed me down to the, new, the nearby stream and out of my shoes so she could fill them with mud. Edward drove over me with his bicycle while two hench persons pinned me down at either end. And the very worst was being forced to kiss Joyce, who looked like Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> the teacher had a solution. She let me out early each day so I could outrun the evil ones. Maybe that's why I became a marathoner. <laughs> Sometimes she forgot, and I was fed up. After a standoff, I went to another one-room school, a cocoon that holds only good memories. Tomato soup bubbling on the pot-bellied stove before lunch, the aroma mingling with wet, scorching mittens. My grade five teacher, who fed a new fascination with the planets in the solar system, a relief for a pupil who had thought the world ended at Truro. It would be fun to stage a play about Carol and Edward, the grade three uh, anti-heroes. They could morph into mega-bullies, now prominent on the world stage. As arts graduates, we are alchemists. We can problematize the dystopia. We can turn base metals, like Carol and Edward, uh, into precious stones. As arts graduates, we ask important questions. We help people sort things out. And we make art. The works of Blaise Pascal might have fallen on my head in the Parisian cocoon. He was a mathematician, physicist, philosopher, and theologian who wrote poetry in secret. Pascal's scientific curiosity knew no bounds. He wrote a math treatise at age 16 and invented a digital computer uh, calculator soon afterwards. Our admissions team would recruit him to Mount A, had he not died 362 years ago. He would thrive at Mount A, completing any number of possible double majors. Pascal would understand my decision to leave science after my first year. When a math teacher smiled and whispered, 
traitor. I knew Maure was my home. Pascal's poetry was found after his death, sewn into a coat, hidden from others in the monastery where he withdrew for his final years. A unit of pressure and a computer language bear his name, but it's les pensées, the poetry, that really endured. L'homme est un roseau, le plus faible de la nature, mais c'est un roseau pensant. We are but reeds, the weakest thing in nature, but we are thinking reeds. There is a mantra for celebrating the power of the mind so soon after lockdown. Pascal's poetry sublimates his vast experience, to use a term psychoanalysts borrowed from chemists. He, by turns, isolated and open to the world, he sees our contradictions, our ambiguities. He highlights our nature as social beings who crave solitude. We are arts graduates. We get it. We spend a lot of time working alone, but our goal is to share. Imagine Pascal at Mount A walking with a friend or two in the waterfall park on starlit nights, conversing passionately about our place in the universe. I quote, what are we? Nothing in the face of infinity. Everything when we gaze into the void, end of quote. And Pascal did not know about the 800 plus million galaxies or the 39 trillion organisms that inhabit, inhabit our microbiome. Pascal's friends might ask him why he hid his poetry. Because the monks wouldn't like it? Maybe. And maybe he had an urge to share emotions that are all too often suppressed by a busy world. I quote, Le silence éternel de ces espaces infinis m'effraie. The eternal silence of infinite space terrifies me. If someone said that sharing wonderment and fear makes you a nerd, you could tell them that without wonderment and fear, there would be much less art. 34 years ago this week, I ran the Paris Marathon. At the start, thousands of us made our way up the Champs-Élysées in a cocoon redolent of muscle relaxants and pulsing with music, every tree wired for sound. You guessed it, Vangelis, chariots of fire. Someone in my life team had fastened a tiny maple leaf on the back of my singlet. A runner passing me, and there were many runners passing me, touched me lightly on the shoulder and shouted, Allez, Canada! Go, Canada! Talk about reaching out. He even took time for a high five. It was not easy to run and cry at the same time. At 35 kilometers or so, with the wall closing in, I was grateful for that five-second conversation, that spot of time, that precious memory. Whether you leave by Main Street or Bridge Street, the road life takes you on will not always be smooth. Change will blur the landscape. Carol and Edward might be waiting to ambush you. You will need your cocoons, and the world needs your conversations. You might not change the world, but you will make it a less dystopian place. When you come up to receive your degree, Make it a spot of time, 
your life team up here won't let you trip on your gown. Make it a spot of time. Bonne route, congratulations, thank you very much.